So in this section, we're going to talk about continuous distributions. If you recall last section, we were doing discrete distributions, and a discrete distribution answered the question, how much or how many? Continuous distribution, think of it more like a measurement, where all values are possible in any given interval. Some of the characteristics of a continuous distribution is that all values in an interval are possible. And just by convention, we consider money to be continuous, even though you could argue that it's, it's always rounded or discrete to the nearest penny. The other thing that comes out of this is it's impossible to find the probability of a specific measure. So imagine we're talking about weight, and we're talking about adult human weight. And you step on the scale in the morning, and the scale says that you weigh 90 kilograms. Well, with a continuous distribution, you don't really weigh 90 kilograms. It's just a limitation of how accurate our scale is. If we went to two decimal places, you wouldn't weigh 90 kilograms. If we went to three decimal places, you certainly wouldn't weigh 90 kilograms. So instead, what we have to talk about when we're talking about a continuous distribution is we need to talk about an interval. So rather than saying, what's the probability that you weigh 90 kilograms, we could say, what's the probability you weigh between 89.5 kilograms and 90.4 kilograms? The continuous distribution that we're going to talk about in this unit is the normal distribution. And this is my artist's rendering of the normal distribution. Some of the characteristics of the normal distribution that are important are that it's symmetrical, so the two halves are mirror images of each other. And that red line down the middle of the normal distribution is the mean. It's also the median and the mode. This is the formula for the normal probability density function. And you don't have to memorize the formula. You don't even have to use the formula. But if you look at the formula, you see that in the first section there's pi, that's a constant. There's e, that's a constant. We talked about that when we were talking about the Poisson distribution. And if we look at the exponent, we've got the mean of the distribution and we've got the standard deviation of the distribution. So everything in this formula is a constant except for the mean and the standard deviation. The reason this is important is that we can actually then standardize the normal distribution. So instead of saying that someone weighs 10 kilograms more than the mean, or someone's IQ is five points below the mean, we can change this into a standardized measure. And that standardized measure that we're going to use is a standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is that original curve that we looked at. That line down the middle now has a value of zero. That's our mean. We're going to give it a standard deviation of one. And the area underneath that curve is going to total 1. And that's important because 1 also represents the total of all probability added together. The way that we're going to move from our measurement of IQ points or weight or height and come up with the standard normal measurement is we're going to change it into a z-score. So we're going to take our value, we're going to subtract the mean and divide by a standard deviation. And now, rather than saying that someone is 10 kilograms heavier than the average weight, we can say they're one and a half standard deviations more than the average weight. Rather than saying someone is five IQ points lower than the average IQ score, we can say they're half a standard deviation lower than the average IQ score. And by doing this, what we can do is we can use one standard normal table to represent all the normal distributions. And, and that's what we'll look at in the next lesson.